Okay, I was just making the video for how to do the Excel analyses of the sensor data, and I realized there's a much better way to do it. So let's do it together. So here's sensor one. I'm going to open sensor one. Co let me copy it. We're going to copy this. Let's go to Excel. I'm going to open a new one in Excel. Let's put it in. Sensor one. Now let's go back. Now we're going to get sensor two. Copy it copy it go to excel put it in now we have them both in excel i'm going to expand these so we see the date and time and they line up nicely now i want to save this so i do save as i'm going to call this march 17th sensor data okay march 17th 2021 sensor data okay so i save that now how are we going to make this right i, I found a really nice way to sort of make this all work. You, I think you're going to like this. So first of all, the dates line up. So I'm going to delete the second date. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to make this bigger so we can see a little bit better. And next, I'm going to call this PM 2.5 for sensor 1, PM 10, sensor 1, CO2, sensor 1. I'm going to de delete formaldehyde. We're not using it. PM 2.5 dash sensor 2, PM 10, sensor 2, CO2 sensor 2. I'm going to delete formaldehyde. Now our goal is to our goal is to try to get the air exchange rates for each of these sensors. And I think there's a clean way of doing it. Well first remember we know we want to get rid of this early data. We need to better we need to take better notes, but if we look down I think it was we can look here and we go down to 1334 we're going to use for our first sample. So I'm going to, what I'm going to first do, hang on a sec, I almost forgot. Let me make a copy of all this raw data. View or copy. Oh, that's, I did the wrong click. Right click on it. Let me do move or copy. Oh, right, I'm going to do create a copy, okay. So I'm going to call this raw data 0317-2021. I'm going to call this, and now this is, 0317-2021. Okay. And so now, now we're in the analysis. Now we can go through and we can click, right? We're going to click and get rid of everything down to 1334. So I'm going to click. Let me go 1335 because look, that one goes up one. So I'm going to do here, 1335, delete. And now we have the date and we have our six measurements from two sensors. And so the next thing we do is we're going to now do this natural log background subtract is what is going to be our next our next part, right? So that's going to be, I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to write, do this. We know this is coming up. But the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need elapsed time. So we, remember, we know how to do elapsed really well now. You subtract it from the first one to get elapsed, right? So you're using the elapsed as the first one as your start time. So you're doing time minus start time times 24 to put in hours. Now we can drag this down. Right, and we have a lapse for all of our samples. I'm going to delete these three outliers here. So we have it. And I think I'm going to add, let me do a little, I'm going to insert there. This is natural log of background data. So we have our, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these headers. I'm going to put them over here. Right, because we're going to repeat it with the background data. Now I'm going to copy those headers one more time over here. You'll see why again. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to find the background value. Let me write this. And I'm going to do a cheat to find the background value. I'm just going to use the minimum today. That's not great. We really need to go out and get the background value. But look, if we use minimum, we can grab that column. And I just did minimum. And as you can see, I, for PM 2.5 um, sensor one, all I did is I click here. I did minimum of that column, right? Now the next right thing is now watch. I'm going to get the background for all of these. I'm just calling it the minimum for that data, right? We need to get background, but minimum will work for today. So that's the minimum value. So now what I can do, look, I'm set up again. Look, I have our elapsed time in these values. So I have the raw data, this empty area, and our minimum. So look, I can go through and I can do all of them at once. I can go equals natural log, 
Now, right, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab the value, PM 2.5 minus sensor 1. Now, I'm going to go over. I'm going to then subtract the background of that sensor, right, for that value. And now I have it. But I'm going to, I'm going to copy and paste all of these. So I'm going to want to hold the 2 constant, but not the V, because I'm going to want to track it across. Because, see, look, this is the natural log of B2 minus V2. So now, look, I can now drag these across. And look, now this is C2, this is PM10, the natural log of C2, which is PM10 sensor 1, minus the background of sensor 1. So this is like, it works beautifully. You see how I just did all that. So now I have this all set up. So now I can just drag this all down. And now we have all of our data. I'm going to put, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in, put borders around these so we can see them. And we're going to end up making a, a table here, a slope, and R squared. I'm going to put all these in. This keeps on popping up hide. I'm going to put, I want to make a nice table here also. So if you saw what I just did, I just, now I have for every value, I have elapsed time. Then I have for each of the values, PM 2.5 sensor 1, PM 10 sensor 1, CO2 sensor 1, PM 2.5 sensor 2, PM 10 sensor 2, CO2 sensor 2. I have the natural log of that value over here, the raw data, minus its background value over there. So we're making progress. The so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this. So I'm going to grab elapsed time. Then I'm going to grab that hit command. Press the other ones. Do that. Then I'm going to go insert, scatter, scatter. Oh, that looks good. That's a nice graph. So now I'm going to do, make it a little bit bigger. Right, and this is um. This is I'm gonna call this background corrected data, and we're gonna put in our chart elements, axes, titles, primary horizontal, axes, titles, primary vertical. I'm gonna call this LN concentration. Right, close this. Came open. This is going to be elapsed time in hours. Close that. Now I'm going to, I don't, I don't, I'm going to, I think I'm going to add the, let's see, legend. I'm going to put it on the right. I actually like the legend on the right for some reason. So I can move it over, make this bigger. And now we can see what they all are. But we can now, if we look at this, we can see. I think we don't want our data for our CO2 data. We don't want this late data. See it? And for our PM 2.5 and PM 10, we don't want this late data. So I think we're going to cut it off. So we'll cut off the PM 10 and 2.5 here about 0.133. So if we go, here's elapsed. Here's the, I think we can cut this data. Let's see. That gets rid of one sensor for, here's sensor two. I'm going to cut it. Now that data looks nice. Or maybe still a little bit late, but I'm going to keep it. I don't get rid of too much data. Now for CO2, I think we want to get rid of some of this late data up to like almost 0.4. So I'm going to, let's see if we can do like here, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. How's that? Now that data is looking pretty linear. So I think we have the data we want, right? The data is looking nice and linear on a log graph. On last time, we have all six values, two sensors, three values per sensor. Now, if you look at this, now we can calculate all these slopes in one fell slope, in one fell, yeah. We can just do them all at once. So go equal, slope. Oh, come on, this always, let's turn that off. So equal, slope, slopes. Now we know our known y, so I'm gonna start here. So I'm gonna do our, these concentrations. We can grab all of them. It won't use the data that's missing. The known x's. Now here's the thing, we're going to want to keep our x's constant when we drag this over and let the other ones change, the y. So watch, I'm going to put dollar signs around all of our x's and then we can do this, drag them over, and wow, we have it. So now that's too many digits, I'm going to get rid of some digits up here, 
So we can look at our slopes. So if we look at our CO2 slopes, the CO2 look about nine. And since it's a negative lambda, let's do let's do minus one times. This will make put it in the right, right? We have to put, do a minus one from the equation. Right, because there's a minus sign on that equation. And now we can look PM 2.5, look 12.9, 12.17. This is like a this is beautiful. Now we can do our r, r squared, so equals rsq, again, known, known y's, comma, known x's. And I'm going to put the dollar signs around the x's. When we drag it, it will keep them constant. And then I'm going to drag these across. I'm going to make these three digits. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move things around a little bit just to make things a little bit nicer to print so we can make a nice table. I think what I'm going to call this is, this is going to go air exchanges. Then I'm going to go sensor one, sensor two. Right, and then I'm gonna call this. I'm just gonna do three of these. Right, so I'm gonna do this, and then if you do equals, here's sensor one, two, three. Now here's no do. Now that clicked funny. Here click. Here equals. Here's sensor two. Right, so. Come on, it's giving me trouble copying. Let me see, copy here. Now I'm gonna give put borders around this, and now we have our answer. And that looks nice. So if you look at sensor one and sensor two, well, the only thing that doesn't quite line up is this PM10. That's interesting. Like, it's sensor one and sensor two were a little, were quite different, but it looks like you get right. It looks like if you look at it, air exchanges. We get nines for the CO2. That's with the door open. And looks like you get more air exchange for the PM 2.5, which is encouraging. That means it goes away faster. A lot of times you, you hear that because also it gets absorbed. So I think this is, hopefully you can make this table work. This is a great way to look at all your data at once. And it's pretty easy. Once you get used to these dollar signs and setting up in Excel, it took me a little while to do it, but I think this is a, this is a beautiful way to look at your data. So see you in class.